We've got the Ping G425 driver with us today. We're gonna to test some of the adjustable settings with the hosel and with the sliding weight and see what the differences are. Hey golfers, Drew Mahole of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We're at the driving range today at Les Bullstead Golf Course. It's a chilly spring day, uh, brisk wind out of the north today, uh, but we're outside, we got the Ping G425 Max driver with us. Uh, we're gonna be playing around with some of the adjustable uh, hosel settings and of course the sliding weight in the back, the 26 gram tungsten weight on the club head. So those are just some of the things that Ping lets you do with a G425 Max driver to kind of uh, fine tune your ball flight and your trajectory. So Thomas, I know this is a very key part of club fittings at second swing, is you know, finding the right setting for a player, whether it's with the hosel, whether it's the weight, or whether it's both. Um, so what are the differences maybe just before hitting shots you know, that you're gonna see by making some changes here? You mentioned the word fine tuning your ball flight. That's the most important thing, is we're, we're fine tuning this at the end. We've already figured out what state of loft we should have on the driver. Today we're gonna to be using the nine degree driver with the G425 Max. You can adjust the loft down mm -hmm. or up, but keep in mind what you're doing is that you're affecting the club face a little bit. You're actually opening and closing the club face a little bit. So a lot of times I see customers come in and they think they can just change that nine degree driver and add a degree and a half loft and just play it at 10.5. Well, technically what you're doing is you're actually closing the club face a little yeah. bit and they don't realize it. If they already hook the ball, then they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes if you put this down minus one and a half, you're actually opening up the club face. And if you have a tendency to already slice the ball, once again, you'd be kind of in trouble there too. Mm -hmm. The other piece we're gonna be playing around with optimization is the CG, so 26 gram tungsten weight in the back. It's not gonna be a huge amount. Notice it doesn't, you know, you can't really move it too far out towards the toe or towards the heel. With Ping, for example, they've kept it pretty far in the back because yeah. MOI for them is huge. They're all about forgiveness, they're all about straight ball flights. Yep. But by just adding a little bit of ball flight adjustability, you can make it a little more fade bias or a little bit more draw bias. It's not gonna solve everything. It's a bias, keep that in mind. It's not all of a sudden you're not gonna hit draws if you put that weight in the heel but it may help just straighten out just a little bit for you. Sure, yeah, if you maybe see a tendency to slice the ball, it might just you know, hide that slice just a little bit more if you put it in the draw setting, for example. But um, we're gonna test out just some of these kind of settings here. We're gonna see what TrackMan tells us about them, and then maybe give you guys an idea of just how much of an impact maybe some of these adjustments can make. Because I think a lot of golfers maybe do kind of maybe ignore the settings that are offered with their driver. Yeah, so we got the Ping G425 Max driver at nine degrees, got the Ping Tour 65, at 45 and a quarter inches, and we got the tightest probably one X golf ball. All right, you ready to hit some bombs here? Let's do it. That sound is just so different. I... All right, so Thomas, that was four with a kind of standard, everything, you know, as it comes, right? Uh, now we've got adjustments to make here. It looks like you're gonna start with the hosel maybe? Yeah, let's start with the hosel adjustments. So let's go higher and let's go lower. So let's put this first up to the big plus. Okay. My expectation would be a, a little higher ball flight, maybe a little more draw bias and a little more spin. Okay. Yeah, there, there's, there's that uh, high and left ball. Well, I hit that one pretty good. Hit the net, so it must be good. Yeah, a little bit lower spin there than the last one. All right, so Thomas, that was four then with the plus, well, the, the big plus, so that's yep. a, essentially a degree and a half, right? Um, moving it up to kind of essentially play at what, 10 and a half-ish degrees of loft and then close that club face. And you can see on the dispersion map here, I mean, it's, you're over about, <laughs> I mean, you're, we're talking about like 20 yards to the left. Um, yeah, it was really noticeable which, to me that the ball was just starting left and just kind of going left a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, it was a completely different flight even from right away. And yep. now do you visually, you can kind of see that, right, when you make that adjustment. You can see that address, I'm sure. I can visually see it. When I first put it down here, I was still trying to kind of get that thing square at, at address because that's my, that's my goal. But I did notice if I sit this thing flat straight down, Yes, the face is a little mm -hmm. bit more closed. That toe is more, a little more rounded on it there too. Um, 
Well, the biggest thing for me is spin. Now, the last shot I hit had 2,200 RPMs of spin on it. That's the only reason that had less spin, as I mentioned right off the bat, got that on the toll. So mm -hmm. that had less spin because it was a toll strike. Okay. The other three shots, my spin rate was pushing 26 to 3,000 RPMs yeah. of spin. Yeah. So more spin because there's more loft. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty simple science there. Yeah. We, phys physics essentially will tell you the more loft you have on a club, the more spin that you'll generate. Right. On, on the exactly. Ball. Yeah. Yeah, and we see that all the time in our tests too. Even with like irons, you know, you have the lower loft and the iron. It's gonna you know, fly through the wind a little bit better. It's gonna fly a little lower and there's gonna be less spin on it. So, yep. and that comes through with driver here as well. But all right, now can flip side of the moving at big plus would be the big minus. Okay. So what what exactly are we doing when we make that adjustment? So it's we're gonna be essentially flipping this basically 180 degrees. Okay. So we're going from one end of the hosel to the other. Now because I'm flipping the hosel adjustment, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to go from a closed position on the big plus to an open position, so opening up that club face a little bit on the, the big minus essentially. Okay. So minus 1.5 is what okay. it has stated on there. Uh, essentially it's going to be close to about 7.5, but we do know it's actually opening up the face a little bit. Yeah. I would expect a little less spin. I would have a harder time to probably turn it over now. Sure. Pretty straight with that, honestly. Yeah. All right, so Thomas, the big minus setting, or minus 1.5. Yep. Um, you know, I'm looking at the map here. You had three, really, that went kind of dead straight, uh, very comparable to the standard ones. And then you had the one that kind of went out to the right. Um, but you can kind of see the differences in the numbers here where the spin does really drop pretty significantly from the standard setting. Yeah, for me, it was bull flight with uh, yeah. having this thing at seven, seven, and, seven and a half. It just penetrated much better through the wind here as mm -hmm. well. And you, you can kind of see the bull flight was a little lower. Yeah, almost squeezing. twenty feet. Almost twenty feet lower with that setting. Interesting, yeah, because it just looked like the bull flight was just a slight little low fade. Uh, when obviously when we put it at the big plus, it clearly was going left. I mm -hmm. don't like that shot at all. I would never right. put myself in that setting on any driver. <laughs> I like this setting because it makes me feel comfortable where I can maybe go after a little harder and not worry about it going left. Yeah, and I can exactly. Maybe make a more efficient golf swing. Yeah, that's what you're able to do, and it's, it's clearly to you as well, and it was, it's more appealing to you based on, I know your first reaction was, yeah. wow, this is kind of more like it, because you don't like to see all that loft on your driver. Yeah. yeah, three degrees is a lot for me to see the difference, especially when my attack angle already is up. Yeah. When I hit up on the ball, um, adding that extra loft, this is gonna kind of go to the mm -hmm. moon a little bit, a little too high. So, I mean, we kind of talked about, these are kind of the more, I guess, extreme, right? There's maybe a little plus and a little minus, but we're seeing a range of about 500 RPM of spin here. We're seeing um, ball speed jump up three miles an hour based on dropping it into the minus 1.5. Um, distance wise, you hit it the farthest, of course, with the minus 1.5 as well, because it was that lower ball flight, able to go through the, the air a little bit better. But uh, interesting, we're seeing some differences, but of course the big, you know, everything was left with the plus 1.5 kind of a, a tendency, maybe a, a bias to the right. With the minus 1.5 standard, it was kind of everything was dead straight as I would expect. So yep. interesting that that's the what you can get out of adjusting with the uh, the trajectory tuning 2.0 hosel sleeve that comes with the G425 drivers. Yeah, and that's not just purely to Callaway either. Whether it's a, a tailor-made tip, whether it's a Callaway tip, whether it's a tightless tip, anytime you do go up and loft, it's gonna make it a little easier for you to draw the ball. Mm -hmm. Anytime you go down and loft, it's gonna fly a little lower, it's gonna spin less, right. and it's gonna be probably a little harder to hit left. Mm -hmm, for That's sure. It's gonna be the same thing. Every hosel is a little bit different. Um, some open their face up a little bit more than others, um, but just kind of keep that in mind. Anytime that you're turning this around, it's gonna be adjusting the face angle. Yeah, you can also tell too, I'm looking at the curve. So your average curve with the plus 1.5, which is kind of the up right there, 23 feet left. Okay. Um, so in your standard setting, you had, you had a bit of a fade at 27 feet right, and then 52 feet right with minus 1.5. So there's your average, kind of the bias that's created by using these settings. So Yeah, so the dispersion pattern probably doesn't st tell the whole story. Yeah. That tells us the whole story on the amount of curve that I was generating. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you're right about that. 
well, now we can maybe play a little bit with that weight in the back. So maybe we can kind of go, we'll, we'll uh, it's a 26 gram tungsten weight. Maybe put it in the draw setting here to start with. We'll see what kind of changes happen compared to your standard shots. Yeah, and I'm not expecting it to, as I mentioned it before, it's a bias. I'm not expecting it to go a, a crazy amount further left yeah. or a crazy amount further right. I think even just the face angle is probably going to make the, the biggest difference because let's face it, the golf ball always follows the direction the club face is pointed at impact. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. the face is a little more open at impact, it's going to go a little more right. Right. If the face is a little more closed at impact, it's going to go a little sure. left. This is going to help for sure center of gravity by adjusting it around a bit, little bit. But it's important to note, a lot of manufacturers have gone away from the adjustable CG on the back of the club mm -hmm. because they know into the goal, end goal is hit the ball straight. Yeah. By having the weight in the back, in the middle, is going to cause the straightest ball shot. For ball sure, flights. for sure. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's start out with the draw bias and then we'll move to the fade bias. Okay. Yep. I feel like I could hit that little five yard draw all day. All right, well Thomas, that dispersion circle with the, the draw setting is pretty tight as well. <laughs> That's pretty impressive repeatability there. There's actually three dots that are right on top of each other here on my map here. But um, now, so what would the, I mean, numbers wise, you'd think maybe lower spin, right? Cause it's kind of a little it's bit actually going, drawing you're drawing. Now. So, yes. so yep. the um, spin should maybe be a little bit lower, um, but then I mean, basically what the, the key here is the dispersion circle, right? And kind of where the club head bias tends to be. And it is a little bit left here. Everything's left of center. Um, you're kind of splitting the difference between your plus 1.5 setting and then your standard. It's kind of right in the middle of all the four of those shots. So um, differences with the plus 1.5 settings is just with spinning a lot more and flying higher, I think. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah this is actually the lowest spin so far uh, that you've hit, even also including the minus 1.5, this is lower yep. spin. but. Um, that map is exactly what I think what you were looking for here. Yep, I was uh, just saying I could just hit that shot all day. <laughs> I think I might hit more fairways if I just try and swing at 106, 107 miles an hour every single time. I mean, <laughs> hey, you're, I mean your circles, like I gotta tell you, yeah. I mean, it's very consistent so far. But um, which is now that I mean now you got the fade setting here, we can adjust to, we can see how that compares. Um, I mean, I, it's nice so far. Everything's kind of worked out. You know how it's what you know Pink tells us is going to happen with these settings. Yep. I mean, like as I mentioned, it's it's definitely a bias. It's important for club fitters to you know play around with it and and try it and recommend it to the to the customers. Keep in mind, it is club face and club path relationship is going to cause the cur ball to curve a certain direction. Yeah. So whether that's a combination of getting club fit, putting the center of gravity, making the hustle adjustments, and then recommending instruction to a, to yeah. a local instructor, that's also going to help to get rid of your fade or get rid of your, your draw sure. that you might have there too. Mm -hmm. So it's a bias. End of the day, we're only human. It's not going to solve everything. It's not going to perfect your swing. Yeah. It's not going to perfect our swing. We still got to hit the ball in the middle of the club as good as we can. So we're going to make a good golf swing at it. So we're going to try and have a good path, but yeah. it's a bias. It'll, it'll help a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Well, none of those went left. <laughs> no, they did not. Those were all kind of a consistent fade there. Yep. Um, and I'm going to bring up this map here because we're going we're gonna to see, I mean, it's pretty telling. I mean, it's pretty good, right? So I talked about how the, the draw setting kind of split the difference between the, you know, the what, plus 1.5 and standard. Yep. This one more or less split the difference than between standard and kind of the minus 1.5. Uh, I think these were more of these were right of center, but you get the idea here that you know you put that weight in the toe setting, it's going to create a fade bias. And we can talk numbers here in terms of the curvature, right? Your curvature with the, the fade setting was 87 feet on average to the right. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, I was having a hard time with this setting. I thought maybe it was gonna maybe just be a little right. Yeah. 
it was really far right for me. Yeah. I mean, it was just it's a it's a bad setting for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't didn't like it. I didn't <laughs> did not like seeing that ball flight go like that. I was honestly trying to fight it a little bit and trying to hit the ball a little 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 more draw with it, and it was still staying there to the right. So, it's nice to know if you're looking for a fade bias option, you could do a combination. You could put the weight in the heel. You could also put it down yeah. one and a half, and then you would be very very hard for you to hit left essentially right yeah i mean but. yeah that's the thing too and i know that's what your the fitters here at second swing are trained about is com combining settings too with the drivers that that do have both the sliding weight and the hosel settings you can combine things you can mix and match i know the titleist ts3 and the tsi3 have their weight track as well also with their uh, titleist surefit hosel so there's yep. drivers out there that still do have the sliding weight and the hosel uh, but it's it's important for golfers that maybe are struggling with you know, a one-way miss or what have you off the tee. Maybe they want to bet the higher. Maybe they want to hit it lower. Uh, there's ways with these settings that you can fix that on your own without maybe buying a brand new driver, for example. Keep in mind also with Ping, we do have those three hidden uh, adjustments that you've got. So on the back side, there is the flat setting. So with with the flat setting, you can actually make the club sit a little bit flatter for you, which would also make it a little bit harder to hit left. Mm -hmm. I definitely don't want to hit that right now because I'm already having a hard time <laughs> yeah. with that right ball right after that. But you know, for me, either putting the weight in the heel or having the loft more probably around about nine degrees was the straightest ball flight. Mm -hmm. It was clearly the straightest ball flight. If you want to draw the ball a little bit more, you can put it up in loft and put the weight in the heel. That would definitely be a good match there as well if you really had a hard time with the, with the fade. The G425 Max, for example, is also already a very, very forgiving driver. So yeah. it's designed to fly straight uh, on, on your miss a little bit. But once you start playing around with the settings, keep in yeah. mind, it's changing the club face. It's changing the center of gravity. 26 gram weight, and I, like I mentioned, I was surprised that this thing was going that much further to the right. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it would because it's not being moved as far out towards the toe it still had that tendency to go right. Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting. But overall, I mean, you can kind of see the major differences, right, that each of these unique settings that we tried today is going to create and the bias, I guess, that's going to be created by putting the club in that setting. So it's just one example, um, you know, of what you can be really achieve out of your driver by just ma manipulating the settings, manipulating the weight a little bit could, you know, keep you from missing right five times in a, in a round and instead keep straightening those out. So. Um, Thomas, this was a really good test and it was actually, it was really nice how consistent your swing was today so we can really identify the differences here. Um, and it's pretty significant, I think. I mean, the, these settings do work and you can see on the map here. Yeah, it's, it's going to really affect the ball flight, so make sure you work with the club fitter to get that dialed in.